Howdy students! Uh, welcome to Unit 5, uh, specifically nomenclature, which just means naming stuff. Uh, we're going to start out talking about ionic compounds, we're going to start out with a review, and then we're going to get into the new stuff, the type 2 compounds, the multivalent ions. Uh, this video is going to be kind of long, so I'm going to allow skipping on it. If you jump around, feel free to, if you're not sure on stuff, watch all of it. If you want to move forward, uh, just, just, uh, just watch the stuff that you want to watch. Don't worry, uh, I'm going to go over with lots of examples um, to make sure that you guys get this down. It's a great, great skill to have. Nomenclature. And also, starting with ionic compounds like sodium chloride, uh, I will first explain why they're made. Ionic formulas. Um, all ionic formulas, these are the symbols with the subscripts, the little numbers underneath them. Um, a chemical compound must have a net charge of zero. This is a very, very important thing to know about ionic compounds. That's why we can balance them out. It doesn't work with covalent compounds, which we will get to soon. If a compound is ionic, it has a cation and an anion. Remember, cats have paws. Uh, that's a positive ion. Then uh, both positive ions and negative ions must be present in ionic compound. You have to have a positive and a negative. And the number of cations and anions must be such that the net charge is zero. They have to balance each other out. If you have uh, a total of six negatives, you need to have a total of six positives. And for any ionic compound, the total charge of the cations uh, total, the total charge of the cations plus the total charge of the anions must equal a zero net charge. Uh, and this is, this is really how they work. Um, to get a positive ion, to get a cation, uh, you're going to donate electrons. Remember, it does this because you can see the eight valence electrons underneath. So it's unhappy. It wants to get rid of that uh, one valence electron. Chlorine has seven valence electrons. If you count them out, it wants one more so it can be happy. Of course, when this happens, though, you get a positive and a negative ion which are attracted to each other because opposites attract. This is how ionic formulas work. Cations are positive, anions are negative, and they are attracted to each other uh, to become neutral. So let's talk about how to name them. Uh, a binary compound, meaning it has uh, two elements consisting uh, of one being a metal, and one being a nonmetal or a polyatomic ion, which we will get to. We're not there yet. Don't worry about what that means. Um, to name these compounds, we simply name the ions. Binary ionics, binary compounds are super simple. Uh, there are two types. Uh, the type one, we've gone about over those a little bit before. The metal president, the metal present forms only one type of cation. That's called monovalent. It only has one type of uh, valence electrons configuration. Those are all the trends we've looked on on the periodic table. Uh, you know, group one having one uh, valence, group 13 having three valence. Th those are monovalent compounds. Type two compounds, though, um, the metal present can form two or more cations that have different charges. That's what we're going to concentrate on today. These are called multivalent, sorry for the uh, misspelling here. It's multi, M-U-L-T-I, valent. Uh, they can form different charges because they can have different number of valence electrons. So a type 1 binary, I'll go over briefly again. Just a quick review. The cation can only form one type of cation. Uh, these include everything from group 1, everything from group 2, and zinc, cadmium, silver, and aluminum. Zinc, cadmium, and silver these are all transition metals. These are exceptions to the rule. Uh, aluminum is its own beast. It's in uh, uh, group um, 13. Uh, we see it uh, having just the, uh, we use it frequently in, in these. So the rules are cations is named first. Remember uh, cations, they're positive. They're going to be on the left. They stay on the left in the name. And then the anion is second. In the formula, the cation is first and the anion is second as well. That's nice and convenient, isn't it? Uh, a simple cation, a monatomic, takes its name from the name of the element. Magnesium, beryllium, calcium. 
A simple anion takes the root of the name and ends in ide. Oxygen, you drop off the ox, you drop off the igen, and you get oxide. Uh, chlorine, you drop off the ene, and you get chloride. And then write the name, uh, combining the two names of the ions. We've done this. So examples, we have magnesium, we have phosphide. Let's do the formula first. We have Mg, Mg, okay, that's a G, and remember it's group two, so it's got a two plus. Phosphide is group 15. It has a three, three minus, a three minus, put that in here, three minus. We'll do our LCM like we learned before, so we have one, two, three, four, and we'll type it all out. One times two is two. Two times two is four. Oh, that's a nice four. Three times two is six. Uh, four times two is eight. Uh, phosphide, we'll do the same. Again, we'll list out one, two, three and four. One times three is three. Two times three is six. Uh, we could stop there, but I'm going to keep going. Three times three is nine. And four times three is 12. Okay. Uh, we can see they both have six in common. So we can circle this guy. Man, that's good circling. We can circle this guy, and we know uh, it takes three magnesium two pluses, so we can write that out. M, good here, M, G, uh, we need three of these guys, and it takes uh, two uh, phosphide, which are three minuses, so we have this here, and we have this. Now, how do we name this? Well, we just take this ion and this one, and we get, uh, I'll just write it out, uh, magnesium phosphide. That's the whole name. Cross out the ands. All right, uh, let's do aluminum and chloride. Aluminum is a, Uh, remember, it is group 13. It is a 3 plus. Uh, chlorine is a uh, group uh, 17. It is a 1 minus because it wants, it's got seven valence electrons. It needs one more. Uh, all right. So let's do our LCM again. 2, 3, uh, 4. Probably won't need to go out that far, but we'll do it. One, two, three, four. Start with our cation. One times three is three. Two times three is six. Three times three is nine. And four times three is 12. We'll see if we need to go up that high. For chloride, we have one times one is one. Two times one is two. Uh, three times one is three, and as such, we see, I'm gonna, just gonna stop here, we know four times one is four, obviously, uh, but if we have three, that's our LCM, our least common multiple for both of them, so we know that's the number we're going for. So it takes one aluminum ion uh, to uh, balance out, a L, and it takes three chloride. So we'll put a C, L, and this is one, three. AlCl3 is aluminum chloride. That's where we get our name. All right, uh, remember, ions are formed from cations. Uh, compounds are formed from cations and anions. Uh, 
name of the cation form from monatomic metals, use the metal name, uh, the metal's name, remember that's the uh, plus ion, and then names of the anion form from monatomic nonmetals, uh, uses the root of the name nonmetal plus the ide ending, chloride, phosphide, oxide, Notice that the formulas for ionic compounds do not include a charge. Don't include a charge. You'll be uh, taken off for that. You have to make sure that those charges are taken out of there. But individual ion formulas do. So if I just asked you for calcium ion, that's Ca2+. Magnesium ion, that's Mg2+. Aluminum is Al3+. But if I said aluminum chloride, like we just did, that's aluminum uh, that's AlCl3. There's no pluses or minuses in there because they balance out. That's why we're putting them together like that. All right, new stuff, hard stuff. Uh, it's not really hard stuff. It's just a little bit harder. You just have to worry about one more thing. So let's about talk about naming type 2 binary ionic compounds. Um, many metals are multivalent, meaning they're going to form uh, more than one uh, types of charge, 2+, plus, 3+, plus, 4+, plus, 1+. Plus. They're not just nice like group 1, group 2. Um, so uh, most of the transition metals fall under this group. Uh, tin, lead, and bismuths also form more than one type of cation, even though they're not in the transition metals group. But that does not include silver, zinc, and cadmium. Uh, these only form one type of cation, so if you have, uh, we're going to show Roman numerals, if you use Roman numerals with silver, zinc, and cadmium, cadmium, you are technically incorrect. So remember, just memorize, silver, zinc, cad cadmium do not uh, need Roman numerals. Uh, so we'll talk about some typical multivalent metals. Uh, iron 3 plus uh, is shown as iron Roman numeral 3. Uh, iron 2 plus is shown as iron 2. Uh, copper 2 plus is copper 2. Copper plus is copper 1. Uh, cobalt 3 plus, CO3 plus is cobalt 3. Starting to see a trend here. Uh, CO2 plus is cobalt 2. SN4 plus is tin 4. SN2 plus is tin 2. PB4 plus is lead 4. PB2 plus is lead 2. Uh, mercury 2 plus is mercury 2. And mercury 2 uh, is mercury 1. So this is kind of confusing. Uh, this 2 means you actually have uh, two HGs. So if you have two of these mercuries together, uh, each one of them could would contribute uh, one uh, positive. Um, that's how we get this 2 plus. It's mercury 1. So without this one confusing here, you can see that the charge on the cation is always what's in the Roman numeral. Uh, remember Roman numerals, uh, one uh, equals one. Uh, two is two lines equals I, I lines. Uh, three is easy again, three equals one, two, three. And then it gets a little bit confusing. Make sure you know these. Uh, I don't know if you are Roman or not, but you need to know these numerals because uh, they're important in chemistry. Is I, V, uh, that is four. That means one before five because five is just a V. to be. Uh, and then 6 is um, actually 1 after 5. V, I. And that's really as high as we're going to need to go, so I'll stop there. You're welcome. Uh, so naming these, uh, why why do we do that? Why, why are we worrying about that? If I said just gold chloride, gold is a transition metal, uh, we know it's probably multivalent because it's not silver uh, or cadmium. Um, yeah, uh, gold chloride is not enough. Is it uh, Au1 plus or Au3 plus? Um, well, 
that's where the Roman numerals are helpful. They actually make your life better. In fact, um, when you already have the name, it's very easy to do the uh, uh, to do the formula because you don't even have to look on the periodic table. You just look, oh, uh, uh, gold one just has a one plus charge. I'll use that in my LCM. So, Roman numerals important in this type. Uh, so let's let's do an example. FeCl2. Uh, we look here. If we just said iron chloride, that's that's not good enough because iron again is the a transition metal. It's a multivalent. We need to specify which cation. Is it two plus or three plus? Well, here's here's a good way to think about it. The charge on the Fe has to be balanced, right? We know this equals zero, and we know chloride because it's group 17. Uh, has a one minus charge. Well, we know we have two one minuses. So we have, we need to equal zero, and we have equal zero. So we have two times one minus, one minus, and that needs to equal to zero. So two times this is two minus, How do we make two minus equal to zero? Well, we need a two plus. And we only have one of them, so it's gonna be one times two plus. Meaning that to balance it out, we have the Fe two plus ion, which means that we have iron two chloride. Iron two chloride, note. Iron two does not mean we have two irons. We don't have, we have one iron, uh, but it has a charge of two. The Roman numeral tell us, tells us the charge. Roman numeral tells us the charge, not the number of ions present in the compound. Either the uh, anion or cation. It's, it's, Roman numerals are always the charge. So remember, group one, group two, zinc, cadmium, and silver. And aluminum, remember in group 13, are type 1 and do not need Roman numerals. If you include Roman numerals, that's actually incorrect. Transition metals, as well as tin, SN, lead, PB, and bismuths, BI, are type 2 and do need Roman numerals. And the Roman numerals are the charges, not the subscript, not the number. So let's do some examples. I will, I'm just going to show these all, and then we'll go over some of them, and then you can go do some of the other ones. So, uh, CuCl, we can do the same thing again. We know we need to equal zero. We know we have one, one minus, so we just have one minus here. Something plus one minus equals zero. That's got to be one. So we know that we have copper... So this is a one minus, and this has to be a one plus, meaning one plus, that this is copper, copper, oh man, writing so amazingly on this laptop, copper, parentheses, one, chloride. Again, multiple reasons why I am only showing you one of these, or a few of these examples. Copper chloride. Okay, uh, you can do this one. Uh, let's do, let's do this guy. Uh, we know we're gonna need something. We know oxygen is in uh, group uh, group 16, it needs two valence electrons, it's got a two minus charge, two minus charge, so we have uh, something plus two times two minus, or negative two, equals zero. This is 
a negative 4. So we have what? Minus 4 equals 0. Yes, that's got to be a 4 plus. And we only have one of them. So that means this has to be a 4 plus manganese. Manganese. Four. And remember, the Roman numeral for four is one or is IV. IV. Let's do another one. Let's do this guy. Um, yeah, we'll do this guy and then we'll do this guy and then you guys can get some practice with the other ones. So something plus two times, remember, bromine, halogen, uh, it's one minus charge. So two times negative one must equal zero. That means this is a minus two. So that means PB lead has to be two. Uh, give me, I'll just put the four up here. Two minus two equals zero. So this is gonna be a two plus, two plus, and we have lead, much shorter word than manganese. Lead, lead, two, I, I, lead, two, Bromide. 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 Because remember, it's not bromine. That is incorrect. Bromine uh, is the not the anion name. Bromide is the anion name. And we'll do this one down here. A little more complicated. Uh, we have something plus... Uh, we have three S's, uh, and remember the S uh, we know is sulfide. Uh, it's in the same group as oxygen. Uh, it needs two minus charge. It has a two minus charge. So we know three times two minus is minus six, and that has to equal zero say zero, a really good zero, has to equal zero. So this over here, this whole thing must equal six. Well, how do we get that six? Well, we have two of these, two of these times something equals six, two of these times three. So that means this iron, this is a two minus charge, this iron has to have a three plus charge three plus charge, kind of the reverse LCM method. So two times three is the same, or balances out with three times two, which equals zero. So we have iron, iron, what is it? What's it gonna be? Three, one, two, Iron three sulfide. And I think I actually, uh, this I'll go on record right here. I taught you guys incorrectly that sulfide has a uh, pH uh, IDE. That is phosphide I was thinking of. Sulfide um, just has the F here. Remember, you take off the er, add the ide, iron three sulfide is correct. Uh, I'll let you do these other ones here. Uh, remember that the only reason we do these is because, you know what, I'm just gonna write it out because I'm, I'm feeling, 
feeling good, and I don't want to leave you guys hanging high and dry in case you're confused. Um, this is, again, manganese oxide. Um, the reason that we do these, our uh, Roman numerals, is because we don't know which one it's going to be. Uh, there's multiple oxidation states, is what they're actually called, uh, different types of charges uh, that you could possibly have if um, you are a transition metal. A um, little bit complicated, but, but the, just know that it's not as nice and simple as group 1, group 2 uh, elements. Uh, so, multiple oxidation states, we need to specify which uh, oxidation state uh, we're talking about which uh, cation we're talking about, um, so that's why we have the Roman numerals. And here's a nice little flow chart if you're, if you're thinking about this. Binary compounds, meaning you're looking at something with two different types of elements. Uh, so maybe we'll do an example. Let's say we had aluminum, aluminum, we'll do aluminum chloride. Oh, kind of gave it away, but we'll see how we get this. AlCl3. You know what? We'll do AlCl3 and we'll see exactly how to name it using this chart. So, um, binary compound, uh, there are two elements present, yes. Uh, is there a metal present? Well, aluminum is a metal, so yes. Um, that means that the metal uh, that move, means we move on to here. Yes, move on to here. Does the metal form more than one cation? Well, we know aluminum does not. It's not a transition metal, um, and it's not one of the other, uh, you know, it's not tin, it's not uh, lead, it's not um, bismuth. So, uh, no. So we just use the element name for the cation. Uh, that's aluminum. 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 And, um, you know what, cursive is faster. This is what cursive is for. Aluminum. Aluminum chloride. You know what, we'll just try chloride. Oh man, that's good cursive. All right, aluminum chloride. Bam. Uh, yep, and that's it. But let's do... Let's do uh, F E uh, C L three. Okay, is it compound or binary? Yep, bi meaning two. There are two elements. Absolutely. Uh, is the metal present? Yes, it's F E. Uh, does the metal form more than one cation? Well, iron does. We know it can either be 2 plus or 3 plus. So it's a type 2 element. So we can determine, determine the charge, and then we rose, use a Roman numeral. So again, we have iron. Uh, we know this one has a 1 minus charge. 1 minus. Uh, and there's three of them. 1, 2, 3 times 1. That's negative 3, meaning this has to have a 3 minus charge to balance out to zero. So we know we're talking iron, iron. And what do you think it's gonna be? Well, I'm writing this long word. Yep, you're absolutely right. Iron, I, 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 chloride, C, H, L, U, R, D. E. All right. Uh, iron 3 chloride uh, is exactly right. Remember, this is a type 1. Uh, this is a type 1. It's monovalent. This is a type 2. This is multivalent. You have to worry about the Roman numerals, and that's the only thing between them. All right. I really hope that was helpful.